Now I've been keeping an eye out on AppSumo for a deal that allows me to pick up something with a lifetime offer that lets me survey the users and the people that have purchased the different webinars and courses and things that I run. Today, we're going to take a quick overview of Quarry, which is currently on the AppSumo deal for three days in total. So I've picked this up. This is kind of a first look overview, seeing some of the tools and why I grabbed this one over some of the other options that are available. So let's start by taking a quick look at the Quarry website and see what it kind of tells us. So most important of all is Query is basically about getting feedback, satisfaction, surveys, those kinds of things. Very, very useful if you sell products, sell services, and you just want to get user feedback on what it is you're doing. So this will give you a breakdown of the different kinds of things. So you can work it with customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction, use it for market research. Great if you're looking to launch a product or a service and you want to get feedback on it. You can integrate this inside Facebook with SMS. There's lots and lots of really useful options. If we hop over into the AppSumo page, let's take a quick look at the actual plans and what they offer. Now, first of all, let's see, we've got 68 reviews and it's coming back with five tacos. So there are feedback on it. It's coming back positive, always a good thing. And what I always say, if you're ever using or you're interested in purchasing something from AppSumo, don't jump on it from the first day. Let it sort of breathe a little bit for a few days and get some feedback from people that are buying this, testing it and using it. I always find things pop up that I hadn't thought of and I use those as the basis for if it's a decision worth investing my time and effort into looking further. But as you can see, there's a lot of features, including multilingual surveys. We've got advanced branching and conditional logic, and conditional logic is pretty powerful inside here, really useful. We can share it via email. We'll integrate this into Facebook and things, I believe, Zapier integrations. There's web hooks inside here, lots of options. And if we take a quick look at the actual different tiers that we have, I've basically grabbed the single option because the way I want to use it is not going to have a mass appeal where I need to have more than seven and a half thousand responses or emails in a given month. So that works perfectly fine for me. So a $59 investment in this. And I'm not too bothered about things like CNAME. If it's got a little bit of branding on there, I don't really mind too much. Most people are not going to pay that much attention unless it's slapped all over it. But you can see the differences are the amount of responses you can get a month, the amount of storage you have, the amount of users that could be interacted. So if you have a uh, an agency or you work in a small company where multiple people might need to manage maybe client um, accounts, things like that, then maybe the double or multiple may be something that's more useful for you. Or you can obviously jump up to up to five codes on here. However, the only real difference that I can see with the lower ones are the amounts that you get and also the fact that you need to go to double to get the C name and so on. And if we jump up to five codes, for example, the only difference is the C name side of things. So it's not really worth worrying about for lots of use cases. So once you log into Query, this is what you're presented with. This is basically the sort of overview dashboard where you can see your templates and so on. And if we take a look at the top, you can take a look at the dashboard. You can take a look at the projects that you have. Currently, we don't have any. And you can see the contacts. And this is information about the people that have actually filled out the surveys, given you responses, those kinds of things. So we have a lot of great options to start off with. We can quickly just hit the ground running, broken down into most popular customer feedback, human resources, those kinds of things. You can see there's a lot of predefined templates that you can just use as a starting point to just customize to what you want. So for example, if I was looking for customer satisfaction, which is something that I actually do use on the webinars and things, you can click open that up and then this gives you a preview of this. So we can take a look at what this looks like and we can actually step through it and see how it all works. So we can just scroll through, see the various different steps inside here, the various different kinds of interactions that we have. It gives us a completed option. You can see there's a little bit of branding, which apparently you can remove even in the lowest tier. But for me, like I say, I'm not overly bothered by this. We can take a look at what it looks like on the different kinds of devices, which is pretty cool. You can see on the mobile, we get a progress bar at the top. We don't get that on the other options, which is a shame because it'd be nice, but we do get this 50% completed and so on at the bottom. So we could use those as they are. And we can see we can use the template, it tells us some information about the template, the number of questions and how long it's expected to take. And we could use this if we wanted to. So we'll use this as an example, because starting from scratch, it's going to be, you know, I can kind of cover some of the basics, but I don't think we need to start from scratch for this. Let's use this template. Then this brings us into the builder itself. Now, this gives us a couple of different things that we can do. Actually, quite a few different things that we can do. These are all our questions. 
These are all the things that we want to get feedback on. We can add a new one in. We can simply come over. We can edit this. We can duplicate it or we can trash it off. We also have extra options for the design, all those kinds of things on the left hand side. And then we have the preview window, which takes up the main portion of the editor. We've also got different sections for the integration. And this is where we can integrate it with very different types of things using Zapier and so on. Or we can integrate Lee, Pabli, or let just close that down. Or we can use webhooks if you wanted to use webhooks on here. So it's nice to see it's integrated directly with some of the most popular kind of integration tools. Great to see that. And we can integrate it in various different ways. And they're all pre-built for us if we want to use them. We can distribute this. So we don't want to use any of those integration options. We might want to send this out via QR code, an anonymous link, send it via email, or embed this into your website or into Facebook Messenger, where you can do that inside here. So for example, if we embed the survey, this will then give us different ways in which we can embed it. We can get a preview and see how it all works. So pretty cool. Looks very, very well set up, well thought out. And then we've got the analyze option at the end of it, which is where we can get all the information to do with this particular study that we're doing, this particular sort of survey, including the insight, which will give us a brief overview, the ratings that we get from it, the questions, so we can see who's come back, what responses were there for those questions, the responses themselves, sentiment, how we kind of get the overall feeling for this, this survey, and then we can compare this with other surveys and so on, so questions and things. So pretty cool, really, really quite cool in there. Let's come back to the build section. Let's take a look at what we have. So let's open up and edit one of these. So we'll take a look at how long have you been one of our customers. This then allows us to choose what kind of interaction we want, what kind of survey question do we want. So we've got multiple choice, which is what we currently have on screen, image multiple choice, drop down, star rating, and emotions. So depend upon what you want, we'll kind of dictate what you would use inside there. We'll leave that as multiple choice. Then we've got the question itself, and we can, if we want to, pipe this data. So we've got survey questions, and we've got contact details. So there's a lot of different options inside you. I'm not going to go into those too much detail, because in all honesty, I haven't actually tried them yet. I've literally just bought this and opened it up to kind of give you an overview. You can apply a description to this particular question. You can specify this is required. If you want to drop an image inside there, you can do. You can even record or add your own video. This is one of the things that I really quite liked about this. If you wanted to make this a more interactive kind of experience when someone is looking to fill out your survey, you can create videos for this and ask them the questions that are on screen, let them give their feedback and so on. Pretty cool. That's my understanding anyway. Obviously, check this out. But then we've also got the different choices. You can see currently we have five different choices, but if we wanted to add more, we could do that, or if we wanted to remove any of these, reorder them. All those options are available to us. And we've got suggestions, so it'll see we've got select from, different kinds of things. And we've also got bulk edit. If we want to do edit all of those, we could do that in one go. Pretty cool to see. In all honesty, that's, that's really quite cool. Add, add choices, add other options if you want to. If we click other options, you can see we can add other. So that's now being added in if we choose it. So you can see once we select that, other appears underneath, and then we can control what text is and so on. So pretty cool, really easy to do. Do you want to allow multiple answers? In some cases, that would make sense. In this one, it wouldn't make sense. And you can randomize, you can do side by side. So you can see that'll put it into two columns, quite nice. We can change the button text, the on, uh, the keyboard shortcut, how do you actually want to do that? And then we can go through, we can see the different kinds of questions. So for example, if we go to the next set of questions, you can see this one is still multiple choice kind of thing. But then we've got this sort of satisfaction between one and five. So you can see this is overall how satisfied are you? Again, you've got, this is a satisfaction score option. So we can set the question. We can say how we want people to interact with that, require the question, add images, record videos for this, and set up the different values you want for the, the extremes, the highest and the lowest, those kinds of things. So you can see this is pretty, self-explanatory. I don't think it would take any kind of rocket science to kind of get an understanding of how all of this works to set up your surveys, whether you start from scratch or you create something by using one of these templates. So once we've kind of seen that, we then have the design option and we can choose from predefined styles if you want to. We can save our own custom themes so we could apply this if you wanted to and you see that immediately picks it up and we can again We've got various different kinds of previews. So if you want to preview this and see what it looks like on different devices, we can do that. So pretty cool to see 
very easy to go ahead and customize this to the way that you want. But if you create your own theme, you can then store those in your My Theme section, or if you want to completely customize this yourself, you could do that inside here. And this is where you'd probably go ahead, customize this to make sure it's perfectly in keeping with your company branding. You could even put image backgrounds inside you if you want to. For example, we'll choose this one, put an image behind it, quite cool. You can adjust the background filter, apply gradients, lots of different cool things. You can even put a video background in if you wanted to. Then we've got the logic, and we'll come back to the logic in a moment because I think that needs its own kind of information. Translations, if you want to translate this into multiple different languages, you can see we have lots and lots and lots of different translation options available to us. So you might want to translate this to, for example, Armenian, and you can see we could then go ahead and do the translation, or we can hit the translate option, and then that will go ahead and try to translate it for us. Now, I don't speak Armenian, Armenian, sorry. I don't even speak anything but English, and I'm not that good at English. But you probably want to get these checked out just to make sure there's no strange lost in translation problems there with it. But again, really cool to see you can do this. And if you want to get rid of it, you can do that. So we'll delete that option. But if we want to translate it, those options are there. Hop into settings, and you can see this allows us to customize this a little bit better. We can choose the chosen composed language. In this example, it would be English. Uh, show question numbers, those kinds of things, progress bars, asterisks, disable scroll, all really, really easy to kind of understand. Response settings, then you can just choose how this all works. Do you want to set response counts, schedule a cutoff date, redirect when closed? So you might want to get someone to fill this out, then you redirect it to a specific page once they've done it, a thank you page, for example, or maybe something that you reward them for, for filling out the survey. It could be a freebie, it could be a discount, whatever you kind of want. Do you want to allow people to have partial submissions, for example? All those kinds of cool things. And if we come out to the advanced settings, then you can see we can drop in our Google Analytics code. We can drop in header code injection, body code injection, and so on. So we can track this, probably use things like Google Pixel and so on. Again, I haven't tried that, but I'm assuming if you can drop in code in there, you should be able to drop in things like pixel codes and so on. And then finally, you've got your notifications. So do you want to add self-notification, respondent notifications? And if we click add, you can see how you get notified of this. So by email and so on. So pretty cool to see all those options are available in there. Okay, so let's take a look at what I consider to be probably the most powerful feature you have inside Quarry. This is the enable logic option. So let's just enable that so we can test it out. Let's take a look at the logic itself. So let's go back to our first question. And the reason I'm going to say the first question is because we have the first option is that this is my first purchase or how long have you been a customer? Well, that might mean you don't want them to continue on with the rest of the survey or you might want to take them to a different part of the survey, which is more in keeping with someone on a first purchase as opposed to someone that might have purchased several times from you. This is where the logic comes in. Now, again, I can't go into too much detail with this because this is just my first look and I need to really get stuck in myself. But I'm just kind of like just giving you an idea of how these kinds of things work. If you want to add variables, you can do. But for me, the most important thing is coming into the advanced option where we can set up the rules. So we click on add rule. This looks really simple, but it is really, really powerful. So we can choose the question. So we're going to choose the first question in our survey, which is how long have you been a customer thing? So then we can choose the condition. So equal, not equal, is one of, is not one of, so on. So we're going to say is equal to, and then say this is my first purchase, which is the answer to that first question. So if someone answers that question with this is my first purchase, we can choose a decision. And then we can say disqualify participant, for example, end the survey, end the survey and redirect, redirect on completion or disqualify. So we've got different conditions on what we can do. So we might say, well, let's just end the survey and redirect the participant. We'll click that. And then we can say where they go to. So we might have a thank you very much. This discount code might be something you would want to make your first purchase, you know, whatever you kind of want to do. You can add additional conditions on there. So again, you can select different questions and we have a qualifier on there. So we can set this to and, for example, or and or, I'm assuming. There we go. So we just click on it. So it allows us to very quickly create more comprehensive logic that makes this survey more powerful and we can control various different things. So that's pretty cool to see. I like that. Disqualify participant, for example, to play custom message. Redirect participant, disqualify. Lots of different things you can do. It would be nice to actually see that you could actually forward them to a different question inside you, which is what I assume that you probably could do. So maybe I'm missing something, and that's very probable for the fact that I literally have spent probably 30 minutes just looking at this. But it is giving us 
quite a lot of control over how all of this works. And then your conditional logic, we've got different various different things and you can come into your variables and we can see how this works. Uh, so there's lots of different options inside you to customize everything. Now, once you create your survey and you have a couple of surveys or projects, then you can start to use the information that's on your dashboard. So for example, if we look under the project section, there's our project we just created. We can edit this or we can analyze it. So we can analyze and take us over into all the analysis information. Again, like I say, so the ratings and so on. We've got view reports. We've got the ability to chart colors. We can download the responses. We can share this with our customers, with our, our clients or so on, if we're setting this up for them. So that's pretty cool. If we hop back over, we can also see if we've got the dashboard, we get a kind of top down view of various different aspects. So NPS, CSAT, CES, overall rating, overall sentiment. And you can see it tells us what plan we're on and those kinds of things and, and what we're using inside there. So what do I honestly think of this? I've been looking for a tool that allows me to survey using various different methods this looks like a promising tool. It's something that, like I say, I've invested in this out of my own pocket. I'm going to test this out on the next webinar that I'm doing, and I'm going to compare it to the one that I picked up the last time on AppSumo, which I think was called Zonka, which is good, but kind of feels just a little bit cluttered in comparison to how simple this is to actually get started. So that's Quarry, the deal that I just picked up on AppSumo for dealing with surveys. What are your thoughts on this? Do you enjoy this kind of content? Let me know in the comment section below if you're going to pick this up or you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. The link to this is in the description. It is an affiliate link, so it does help support the channel if you grab it, but it doesn't cost you any more money whatsoever. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, hit the thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.